Hi guys, I am so glad to have you back in the High Gas Fee Studio. As I've told you before, the name High Gas Fee stands for Have I Got a Story for You. And today, oh my, have I got a story for you. But first, I have a question. Do you dream? And if you do dream, are your dreams scary, like somebody's chasing you, or happy, like you're playing at the beach, or are they odd, weird, kind of crazy? Well, today I want to tell you about an artist who took his odd, crazy, weird dreams and he made paintings of them. His name was Salvador Dali. Little Salvador was born in 1904 in the country of Spain, in the Catalonia region, very close to France. Now, what's weird about this story is that nine months before he was born, the Dali family had another little boy. And this little boy, at two and a half years old, died. His name was Salvador. So, get this straight now. The Dalis have a little boy, he dies, his name is Salvador. Nine months later, they have another little boy and they named him Salvador. His parents mentioned to him several times in his childhood that they felt like that the second little Salvador was the first little Salvador coming back to them. Not a very healthy way to begin life as Salvador number two, in my opinion. Little Salvador loved to play. He loved soccer. He loved drawing. Sometimes Salvador would even get into trouble at school for his daydreaming. I want to show you this family picture. You see the little boy sitting in the middle of the rock? Well, that's little Salvador. His dad is sitting right behind him, and next to him is Salvador's mother. The lady on the far left is his aunt. And then as you come to the right of the rock, you'll see another lady. That's his other aunt and a little girl. That's Salvador's little sister, Anna Maria. And then the lady sitting close to us is Salvador's grandmother. Mr. and Mrs. Dali were very encouraging of Salvador, especially in his drawings and his artwork. They even set up his very first studio on the roof of their house. Luckily, it was a flat roof looking over the sea. This one he did when he was just six years old. It's incredible. And here's one that he did when he was nine. The paintings are fabulous. So fabulous that his parents decided that he needed to go to art school in order to get even better. Here's one that he did as he was entering art school. He was just 12 years old. And here's one that he did when he was just 14 years old. As you can see, he is a great artist. He decided after he finished high school that he would go to a university that taught him even more about art. There, he got even better. Here's some of the paintings that he did while he was at the university. This one is the back of his sister. Remember I told you about Anna Marie? She's looking out the window. And here's one that he painted of her up close, the back of her, that is. Look at those curls. He was really good at detail. While at the art university, Salvador was known to be um, a little different. He grew his hair out, which was not the style at the time. He also let his sideburns grow down in front of his ears. He would dress in suit coats, stockings, and short pants that stopped at the knee. After nearly four years at school, his ego had grown so large that he decided he was too good for any of the professors to judge him or his artwork. With that attitude, he was quickly kicked out of the school. After he was kicked out of the university, two things happened that changed his life. He began to thin down his mustache and grow it out very long using wax to shape it. 
Throughout the rest of his life, he kept a very long mustache that sometimes stuck out farther than his ears. The second thing that happened was that Salvador Dali became obsessed with a new style of art called surrealism. It sounds like I'm talking about something being so real, but it's not. Let me see if I can explain it. Remember earlier I asked you if you dreamed when you slept? Well, I do sometimes. And often in my dream, I am running really, really fast, but it seems like I'm up in the air because as I run, I can look down and see the houses or the trees or the scene that I am dreaming about. Now, in my dream, it seems right. But when I wake up, that very thought, that type of dream is odd. So if I were to paint it, it would look weird. You'd be able to recognize everything. You'd be able to recognize me running and the trees and the houses. But if I painted it with me in the sky running, it's just kind of crazy. Well, Salvador Dali had such a strong imagination he could see these types of dreams, odd and crazy behaviors that we often have in our dreams. He could see them while he was still awake and he would paint them. And I'd love to show you a few of his surreal, of his kind of crazy, odd and weird paintings. And I have to say, they are quite entertaining. This painting is probably his most famous painting. It's called The Persistence of Memory. Some people have nicknamed it the melting clocks, and I can see why. How many clocks do you see? Well, there are three clocks and then one pocket watch. Three of them are melting. One is melting off the side of a box. One is melting off of a tree branch and one is melting off of a face that also looks like it's melting. Now, the pocket watch doesn't look melted, but if you look closely, it is covered in ants. Dali used ants in a lot of his paintings to symbolize decay. Now I wanna ask you to look very closely at this painting and see if you can find a fly. Look closely, it's hard to find. If you're having trouble, I'll let you know where it is. It's located on the melted clock on the table, right below the number 12. And if you look even closer, some people say that the shadow that's to the left of the fly doesn't look like the fly, but it looks like the shape of a man. What do you think? Many art critics have said that Dali was inspired by Einstein's theory of relativity when he painted this. Dali actually said that he was inspired when he saw cheese melting on a table. This painting is called The Elephants. When we think of elephants, we think of strength and power and dominance. But Dali turned this notion upside down with his surreal painting. These elephants have long, spindly legs, almost like spiders. And the legs have multiple joints in them. At least the elephant's bodies look strong. They are carrying obelisk, which are big rock columns. Or are they carrying them? Look closely. Are the obelisk actually on the elephant's backs? No, they are floating above the elephants. Also wanna ask if you can find two people in this painting. They're pretty small. They are facing each other just like the elephants are, the very bottom of the painting. It must be dawn or very early, early morning. Look at the long shadows that are stretched to the left of the elephant's legs and the people. 
Do you want to see some more of those crazy surreal paintings by Dali? I was hoping you'd say that. Take a look at this one. I'm not going to tell you the name of this painting yet because we're going to check it out first. In this painting, you will see three swans in the very middle. Do you see them? They are floating in a pool of water that's very still. Behind them, you see trees, but the trees don't have any leaves on them. And then behind the trees, you see hills and mountains with swirling brown, yellow, and orange colors. You see odd-looking clouds in the blue sky. Let's go back to that still water. When water is still, you can see reflections very, very well. Do you see the swan's reflection in the water? What do those reflections look like? Elephants. Boy, Dali really liked elephants. The swan's necks are the elephant's trunks. The swan's bodies become the elephant's ears. The leafless trees behind the swans are reflected as the elephant's legs. Once you notice the elephants, it seems that the swans are being carried on the elephant's backs. So now to tell you the name of this painting, it's called Swans Reflecting Elephants. By the way, before we go to the next painting, have you found the man with his back to the swans? It's on the left side of the painting. Salvador Dali did get married to the love of his life. It was a lady who was from Russia and her name was Gala. We see her in many of Dali's paintings. She was one of his favorite models. I wanted to show you a picture of her before we go to our next painting. It is probably one of my favorite Dali paintings. Let's take a look. It's called Galatia of the Spheres. After World War II, Dali was very interested in the atomic bomb. He liked science, so he studied physics and atomic structures. He painted this painting with the spheres, or balls, representing atoms. But can you see his wife, Gala, in the spheres? I notice that when I step back from this painting just a little bit, I can see her better. When I'm up close, I become mesmerized with the balls, their coloring and shading, their cracks and chips, the way he made them look like they're actually moving. I think this painting is mesmerizing. Not only were Dali's paintings surreal, odd, weird looking, but Salvador Dali also presented himself as being surreal, odd, weird. I think it was a way of promoting himself, making himself seem interesting. There are very few photographs of Salvador Dali where he wasn't making faces. He especially loved to open his eyes super, super wide. He would wear weird clothing and he would do odd things to get attention. One time he drove to Paris from Spain in a Rolls Royce, which is a very expensive, fancy car, and he stuffed 1,100 pounds of cauliflower in the car. All this for crazy attention. He even had a diving suit made especially for him to wear at an exhibit where he was to give a speech. Of course, when he arrived in this diving suit, everyone was staring at him. He began his speech, but after a few minutes, he realized he was using up all the air in the suit. He began to tug at the helmet to get it off so he could breathe. The audience thought it was part of the speech and they began to giggle and laugh at him. He struggled and struggled and the audience laughed and laughed. Finally, someone realized he really was in trouble and they used his cane to pry the helmet 
off. It definitely made a day to remember for Dali and his audience. Salvador's wife, Gala, died in 1982 at the age of 87 years old. Oh, he missed her terribly. They had been happily married for 53 years. And after that, his own health began to deteriorate. Six years later, after Gala had died, Salvador Dali also died of heart failure at the age of 84 years old. Salvador Dali had an imagination greater than anything I've ever seen. When you look at his photographs, you might think that he's a madman, or maybe you think he's a genius. Either way, he has become one of the most world-famous surrealist artists that we have ever known. I want to invite you back to the High Gatsby YouTube channel as we embark on an adventure of copying some of Dali's paintings. They are a lot of fun, and I promise I'll help you step by step. In the meantime, I want you to stay safe and healthy.